It's an honor to be here and really excited to be talking about Quarto and Python together. Uh, so as uh, mentioned, my name is Tom Mock. I work at Posit, which uh, we recently rebranded our name from our studio to Posit. And I'm actually a product manager and customer enablement lead uh, there at Posit. Just in case you aren't familiar with the Posit the company, I do have this slide for kind of future use, uh, but our studio PBC recently rebranded to Posit PBC kind of to encompass this idea that we're doing more than just R and more than just our studio. So we actually have been contributing both financially and via open source uh, to a lot of uh, Python and R over the past few years. So just including that as we kind of get started. But really I'm here to talk about Quarto. And that's kind of part of our open source mission. So what is Quarto? Quarto is an open source scientific and technical publishing system that builds on standard markdown with features that are essential for scientific communication. These computations could be in many languages. Things like obviously Python is what we're thinking about today, but also things like R and Julia and even JavaScript or observable JavaScript. We're worried about Markdown in this case and scientific Markdown. We use Pandoc flavored Markdown with a lot of enhancements to make it easier to put together documents, scientific computing, and overall structure your documents in a cohesive way. And that output doesn't have to just be a document. The slide deck you're seeing today was actually made with Quarto. And this is actually a Reveal.js presentation made with Quarto that includes both computation, Markdown, and the final output I'm showing today. But you can also make websites, books, blogs, or uh, journal articles in addition to basic documents. So overall, this is the idea of literate programming, combining computation, markdown, output all together. And there's lots of different kind of history here. Things like org mode, weave, R markdown, I publish, Jupyter book, Jupyter notebooks. It's a lot of things going on. And I'll talk a little bit about how Quarto kind of combines some of the ideas and builds upon some of the ideas. The origins of Quarto actually started over a decade ago. Um, Quarto is an open source project sponsored by Posit PBC, again, formerly known as our Studio PBC, kind of keep hitting on that idea. And we have over 10 years of experience building our markdown. Uh, this is a system that's relatively similar to Quarto, but one that was really R specific. It used an R package, it relied on R as a language. But overall, this convinced us that the core ideas were sound because of how popular it became and because of how many people built around it and built entire ecosystems around it. However, as you can imagine, uh, the number of languages and runtimes used for scientific discourse and scientific computing is very broad. And no one language, R, Python, SQL, JavaScript, Julia, Rust, no one language covers it all. So we wanted to kind of redesign our markdown to not be as dependent upon R, allow R to be used, but also allow other languages like Python and Julia to be used natively within it. So Quarto is this ground up reimagining of our markdown that is fundamentally multi-language and multi-engine. What I mean by that is like, of course, you can natively execute R, but you can also natively execute Python, natively execute Julia, use Jupyter Notebooks, use Quarto Markdown documents. There's lots of different ways you can use it as opposed to having to work only through this R Markdown workflow. Ultimately, Quarto gets inspiration from both R Markdown and Jupyter Notebooks and provides both a plain text option, similar to how our Markdown was written, or the native use of Jupyter Notebooks and Jupyter Kernels if you want to stay within kind of that workflow. And I'll talk again quite a bit more about both of those as we move along. So goal number one for Quarto in terms of like building up this picture is that it's a computational document. It's a document that includes the source code for the production of that document. So it's self-documenting. Quarto includes a notebook style. So literal Jupyter notebook, IPython notebook as well as a plain text flavor where you see the pure markdown as opposed to kind of the JSON structure that makes up a Jupyter Notebook. Uh, it allows for programmatic automation and reproducibility. So you can generate many reports from a single report and with the source code, you can recreate or reproduce that analysis in the future. And this is a big part about why open source is so valuable is kind of solving bits and pieces of the reproducibility crisis. A second goal of Quarto is this idea of enhanced or uh, scientific markdown. So if you think about some of the documents you've written or articles you've written over time, 
you probably started somewhere with something like Google Docs or Word. Really easy to get started, but as your document complexity increases, it actually gets really hard to structure your document consistently and you start putting an image in and it shifts things off the page, it's hard. So next you move on to something like LaTeX or LaTeX and it's harder to get started, but really powerful across the kind of the picture. But again, it's, it's really hard to get started and it's relatively limited to creating things like PDF or maybe Beamer slides or things like that. With Markdown, you get some of the benefits of really easy to get started, plain text formats, but then you start running to this issue of there's unsupported syntax or difficulties. So Cordo provides more syntax and makes more syntax available to make it easier to create both simple and complex documents over time. And I'll show off some of that as we move forward. The last goal of Quarto is truly building on the idea of single source publishing. Of course, you can take a document, render it out, generate one kind of journal article, and that's your workflow. You're just generating this specific type of journal article. That's possible with Quarto. But Quarto can also generate slides in HTML or in LaTeX. It can generate HTML and DocX and PDF documents, entire websites, blogs, and books, all from the same source code without having to modify and add in new CSS and new HTML and new LaTeX just to get it working. So really building this idea of real single source publishing. To kind of hit on this idea of like scientific computing, scientific markdown, uh, reproducibility, computational documents, I have a simple example here of source code for a Quarto Markdown document on the left and the output of that document on the right. So you can see on the right that we have a nice looking little image and a little plain article. It's got some different formatting. And on the left, we have the structure of a basic Quarto document. So we have a YAML header. This is the front matter or metadata that allows us to set up the document and control how it's uh, kind of what format we're going to, what language we're using. We have Markdown, an enhanced Markdown, allowing us to do things like cross-references, links, or structuring of the document. And then we have source code or Python code chunks that allow us to create graphics or run analyses or create tables or anything else we can do with Python or other languages and embed that into the document on the fly. And this is really powerful for all of the kind of goals that we have moving forward. Now this simple uh, example is great, but what if I don't wanna build for HTML? So Quarto can be rendered to dozens of output formats with Quarto via Pandoc. So it's building around Pandoc as a conversion tool. So you can take the exact same source code, the exact same document and render to HTML or PDF or DocX or EPUB or PowerPoint or Reveal.js slides like the ones I'm using today. So there's a lot of power here for many formats, not just a single one where if you have to convert to one another one, it's very hard and complex. What this really means, if we look at the big picture, is that similar to our markdown, but now enhanced with Quarto and available for all languages, we have all sorts of things you can create. Basic documents, presentations, advanced layouts, entire books, cross-references, page HTML, working on things like even dashboards, websites, and blogs. So the future is bright in, in terms of what you can do now and what you can do in the future with Cordo. So I'm really excited about all the different things you can build with it. So let's go back to that start and say like, well, what is Cordo then? So restating myself, Cordo is an open source scientific and technical publishing system built on Pandoc. Pandoc's allowing you to do all this conversion, but Cordo's providing a lot of structure and power on top of Pandoc. So Quarto is really a language agnostic command line interface or a CLI. If I do something like install Quarto and then call Quarto dash dash help for my terminal, I'd get something like this. It would say, hey, you're on version 1.2.269 and you have a number of commands and I've abbreviated those commands for this slide here. So number one, you can render. You can take an input file and render it out to a different type of output. So again, maybe I start with HTML but then I have to do a journal article, so I want to convert it to PDF. It could be as simple as Quarto Render to PDF. I can also Quarto Preview, which allows me to not only render the document, but also maintain a live window that as I save and make changes, it actually updates in real time and re-renders the document and shows me what the final output looks like. 
And then lastly, Cordo is a publishing system. So I can work on things locally, but I can also publish to GitHub pages or to Netlify or even professional tools like Posit Connect behind a firewall within your enterprise or to Cordo Pubs, which is a free website we maintain for publishing. So a lot of different powerful things you can do with Cordo, but these three core ideas of rendering, previewing, and publish are the core structure of what Cordo allows for. If we look at a basic workflow, it might look something like this. Cordo render a python.cordo markdown document, and then we can say which version we want to render it out to, so PDF or HTML. But we can also take existing Jupyter notebooks as is and also render them out. We can optionally use the stored computation. So someone hands off a Jupyter notebook that already has computation stored inside of its JSON structure. Or we can re-execute it linearly from top to bottom if we want to make sure that things were done in the same order and not out of order. And preview is almost identical, where you can quarter preview both quarter markdown documents and Jupyter notebooks. But now you're previewing that live content and you can save and make changes and make sure that the final output looks exactly like you want it to look like. So very, very exciting in terms of you can use the Cordo Markdown structure or a Jupyter Notebook, you get to choose. When we talk about Jupyter, uh, I'm really talking here about both Jupyter Notebooks and Jupyter Kernels. So things like IPython and the IPython kernel. For our Markdown, we really needed to have R and use Knitter in our Markdown as the engine and the framework. But with Cordo, and specifically for Python, we can natively execute Python with Jupyter kernels such as IPython. The indicated or default Python kernel on your system is bound automatically when Cordo finds a Python executable cell chunk. So you can either use the defaults or you can set a specific kernel in the YAML header. So I can say, hey, I have a Jupyter kernel. I've named it Python 3, just as the default. And I want to make sure I'm using this inside or outside of something like a virtual environment to render my document out. And again, IPython will execute the Python code and transform that output to plain text, graphics, and markdown that is then embedded inside the document and rendered out to the final output with Cordo. So IPython or the Jupyter kernel is handling all the computation. Cordo is structuring the document and then compiling it all together at the very end. But importantly, you get to use the tools you kind of expect or the workflows you'd expect with tools like IPython and Jupyter kernels. For interactive sessions, and again, for those things like previews, Cordo actually keeps the, uh, the Jupyter kernel resident alive as a background daemon to mitigate some of the startup times and make it really efficient in its computation as well. So you can uh, not have to restart and redo everything every time. You can actually keep a stateful uh, kernel around as you're working. Another thing that Cordo provides and, and that Jupyter Notebooks provide is this idea of reproducibility or stored or frozen computation. So Jupyter Notebooks natively allow for this. You can actually store the source code, the output file, and cached output in a single document. And that's what a Jupyter Notebook is. Behind the scenes, it's JSON, and it's actually storing all of that state along with the source code in a single document. In some cases, that's amazing. And in other cases, people want to actually split those out, and we'll talk a little bit about that. There's also Jupyter Cache, which allows you to provide transient caching of cell outputs for an entire doc. And in this case, if any of the cells in the doc are changed, then all the cells will be re-executed, which is a little bit different than how a traditional Jupyter Notebook works. And then Cordo has a different kind of approach to this, but builds on some of the ideas. So Cordo uses what's called freeze, and this uses a multi-file approach. You have source code as your input, and this can again be a plain text Cordo Markdown or a Jupyter Notebook. You have a complete output file that's separate. So you're creating like an HTML page or a PDF document or a PowerPoint presentation. And then you're also storing the computation separately by its exact directory and file as JSON. So this allows you to permanently save and reuse computational outputs across an entire project, across multiple files, and even multiple languages. You're not just stuck with a single document or even a single cell. You can actually save out and extract out the computation separately from each of the other components. And they can always, again, work with Jupyter Notebooks. You're not having to give up that option, but it builds on it for reproducibility reasons. <laughs> 
I keep on saying this idea that a Quarto Markdown document is a plain text file, and I want to reemphasize what that looks like and then compare it to some of the options that we have. Again, a Quarto Markdown document is plain text. It's mainly formed from the metadata or the YAML header at the very top. This, again, allows you to define a format like HTML or PDF. Choose an engine. In this case, I'm using a Jupyter kernel named Python 3. But if I'm using it with R, I could also say use an engine of Knitter to natively execute it in R instead of Python. I could write uh, code chunks. So in Python, it would look like this, three backticks, fence brackets with Python as the uh, language. And then I do, you know, from a language or from a library, import a bunch of things, and then do a quick group by summarize. And then text or markdown is consistent across both languages. So I'm not doing it one way in R or one way in Python or one way in Julia. I'm doing the exact same markdown structure and overall structure of my document consistently with this enhanced scientific markdown. So bolding, headers, hyperlinks, even structuring the document itself is done with Markdown robustly across formats and languages. But Quarto doesn't have to be plain text. And if you want to use a Jupyter Notebook as your primary interface, Quarto can absolutely do that. If you want to make a quarto Jupyter Notebook, you can actually just include a raw chunk at the top define some of your uh, YAML front matter there. So again, like a title, a format, which language engine you want to use for it. And then you just work as usual or as normal in your Jupyter Notebook. On the right, we have the Quarto Preview, which is showing that real-time rendering of the document as you're making changes. So you can still do your inline computation, but also see the final output as you're working. So you have the option of doing both. So that rendering pipeline is, you get to choose your own adventure. You can have a plain text workflow where a Quarto Markdown document uses a Jupyter kernel, writes out an intermediary Markdown file, which is read by Pandoc and converted into the final format. But you also have a notebook workflow where you can reuse the stored computation in that Jupyter notebook or optionally re-execute the whole document top to bottom to make sure that it's done linearly and not out of order. And in this case, we don't actually even have a Quarto Markdown document in the workflow. We're just using a normal Jupyter notebook, an IPython notebook. And so this makes it really easy to answer the question, well, what do I do with my existing IPython notebooks? You keep using them. You don't have to stop using them if you love Jupyter. Keep using them, and you can enhance them or do other things alongside with Quarto. So you get to choose whether to use that stored computation or, again, re-execute the document from top to bottom. So with code, it might look something like Quarto render my favorite Jupyter notebook to HTML, and I want to re-execute it. So I want to make sure that I didn't accidentally execute the last cell before the first cell, and now it won't work. I want to make sure it's truly reproducible. Although if I know it's already good to go, or someone hands off one, I can still render it with Quarto, and again, reuse that existing computation that's stored within it. Quarto can also convert back and forth between the plain text QMD and a Jupyter Notebook representation. This is not rendering, but actually just changing the structuring of the source code. So I can go from QMD to IPython Notebook and IPython Notebook back to QMD. So if you're doing a collaboration where one person likes Jupyter Notebooks, one person likes plain text or .py files, you can convert back and forth. This is kind of similar to how JupyText approaches it. But of course, like Quarto has a, a bigger kind of dream than just kind of the plain text format. We're doing a lot with both Jupyter Notebooks and also with just plain text QMDs themselves. I also want to really hit on this idea of that uh, Jupyter Notebooks are amazing and Quarto is trying to kind of work with that ecosystem and help out and assist with different things. So if you're familiar with Jeremy Howard from Fast.ai, or Hamal Hussein, who's also part of the Fast.ai team. They recently did some reworking of NBDev, which is a way of using Jupyter Notebooks to write Python packages and do a whole lot of other things. And they enhanced it by using Quarto on top of the existing Jupyter Notebooks they're working with. They have a lovely uh, blog post that you could do an entire presentation on called NBDev plus Quarto, a new secret weapon for productivity. But ultimately, they go through this idea of using Jupyter Notebooks here at the core, using Quarto to build out some of the websites and documentation that they're working on, and then using their typical workflow of Jupyter, PyPI, GitHub, and other tooling to actually do uh, their development in Python. 
but bringing Porto into the equation where it makes sense. And that's where it's optional to opt in. And it's really exciting to me that we're building on as opposed to trying to uh, kind of be at odds with other communities. What this really means is that you get to choose and be comfortable in your own workspace. Of course, you can keep using your Jupyter Notebook and you can use Jupyter Lab or the classic Jupyter Notebook to write your documents. You can write an IPython notebook and then just render it with Porto. For other people who would prefer to use text editors as opposed to a notebook interface, we also wrote a VS Code extension. So inside VS Code, you actually have the ability to use a plain text QMD you get this kind of notebook style run cell option. And we can also attach an interactive uh, IPython console directly to that QMD side by side. So you can interactively do your computing, but also keep your source code as plain text. So a lot of power here to kind of work with different popular text editors as well as Jupyter Notebook. And then of course, you know, Posit has this love and continuation of R and R Studio. You can use Quarto Markdown documents. They're baked in very deeply to our studio. So if you ever do R and Python together, or you are an R programmer, um, you know, our studio has amazing support for Quarto Markdown documents. I also want to call out that VS Code with that Quarto extension, along with our studio, have really rich IntelliSense or auto-completion. So for the YAML, it can be kind of confusing sometimes when you're just getting started to remember all the different options. So we actually have auto-completion in VS Code in our studio for the YAML header, so all the different options you can choose. As well as for code chunks, they also have auto-completion for the different code chunk options in addition to the native like Python IntelliSense that you have in VS Code. And this is very similar to what we do in our studio with things like R and Python, as well as the YAML and the chunk options. So that's available in both. Now, switching gears a little bit as we kind of get into the later half of the presentation, there was also this idea of single source publishing. So to show this off, I love Boston Terriers. I've got a little Boston Terrier at home. I wanna write this article about them and I borrowed some information from Wikipedia. I'm creating a beautiful HTML website. But then I also need to create a PDF because someone wants to receive that. With the exact same source code, without writing any CSS or any LaTeX, I can write a document one time and convert it to both HTML and to PDF. That HTML document looks like this. Really nice, I've got a lot of different structuring. I've got a JavaScript enabled uh, hover text for citations. I've got a floating table of contents. I've got images in, in the gutter bar, lots of customization. All done with Cordo, natively with Markdown. And then when I render it to PDF, I get a very similar looking document with PDF, but obviously constrained to what PDF can do. I still have those citations, but now they're footnotes rather than hover text. And I still have the structuring overall of the document with the image in the gutter bar there. So again, you could imagine writing a journal article, but also publishing it as a beautiful website. So you can do a lot with Quarto. And this idea of unified syntax across both Markdown and code also applies for just structuring the document. So here on the left, we have an example of just taking two images from disk and laying them out left and right in there. This will work inside presentations, documents, every different structure. We can just say layout number of columns equals two. But we can also do this on the fly with graphics we're creating with Python. And now I'm using Python code to generate two images and then aligning them again with this layout number of column equals two and giving them their own little figure captions of scatter and box plot. So you can imagine that you're learning at one time and then it applies across all the different formats, all these different languages, and even across different code chunks and the markdown itself for consistency's purpose. So this idea of built into Cordo versus having to rebuild it all on your own or custom is that we're trying to provide a markdown centric format agnostic syntax as shown in these previous slides. So Cordo bundles all sorts of things to make this even better. Like we've built in bootstrap CSS and themes. We respect SAS variables for styling HTML. We include LaTeX templates for specific journals as well as good defaults for PDFs in general. We respect DocX and PowerPoint templates, again, allowing for robust styling for more kind of office-centric things. So really, you shouldn't have to escape out to writing raw LaTeX, HTML, Jinja templates, or anything else. In the vast majority of situations, you can rely purely on this enhanced markdown syntax that we're providing, which provides consistency. 
But of course, if you're building content for a single output and you're knowing I only want to create HTML, then yeah, you can include as much HTML and CSS and JavaScript as you want to optimize for that format. And in the spirit of that, you can actually extend Quarto with what are called extensions. You can add your own custom short codes for things like font awesome icons, and you can embed those and change the little short codes you have into images. You can create your own filters to stylize code chunks so that it shows the file name of the code you're bringing in and then displays your matplotlib code. Or you can define your own entirely new custom formats. And like the presentation I used today, you could have this be a theme that you're using for your own company style of presentation or your own organization that you're working with. Now, the last thing I want to talk about, and then we'll wrap it up, is that Quarto also bundles this idea of interactivity. Of course, as you'd expect, Jupyter widgets all work with Quarto. So I have interaction in my slides, and I can actually like select different things and work directly with these uh, images in uh, Quarto, as well as in Jupyter Notebooks. But Quarto also bundles uh, some work with JavaScript, and specifically observable JavaScript, which is an enhancement to vanilla JavaScript by Mo Mike Bostock and team, who is the author of D3. And this gives us the ability to embed these type of things, which are written purely with JavaScript. And I actually don't have to use R or Python to generate these. I could actually enhance them and add in JavaScript-specific graphics directly into all of my HTML-style uh, outputs. Now, graphics are great like this. But ultimately, I might also want to add little widgets on the fly. I don't want to write a whole new Jupyter widget or IPython widget. Um, I can actually create little widgets like this purely with observable. I can say, well, uh, I'm in the US. Some of y'all are global and in other countries where you use proper degrees Celsius as opposed to Fahrenheit. Uh, it's about 60 degrees here in Texas, which is about 16 degrees Celsius. So I have this nice little conversion tool baked into my presentation. And writing these is really simple because you just have an OJS chunk or observable JavaScript chunk, and then you can add in all the components as needed. The very last thing is like, okay, you try all these things out, you're really excited and you wanna show it off to the world, where can you publish it? So Quarto Publish and the Quarto CLI actually allows you to publish to a lot of places, GitHub Pages, Posit Connect, Netlify, or our free tool called Quarto Pub. So you can sign up there and then publish all of your documents in Python or other languages and host them there so other people can see them and you can share them with your colleagues. With that, I'm gonna wrap up and hopefully have about a minute left for questions. Um, first off, Quarto is crafted with love and care by Posit PBC. The same core team works on both Quarto and maintains our markdown. But Quarto is open source, and we have a full contributor list. You're welcome to add on issues or suggest features or even do pull requests to add different things. And you can find that at Quarto Dev slash Quarto CLI on GitHub. I'll leave this page up as kind of the overview of what we talked about. You can always find these slides at thomasmock.quarto.pub slash Python. And if you just want to try out and get started with Quarto and Python, this link at the bottom actually allows you to get started with VS Code, our Studio, Jupyter, or even a random text editor. Um, with that, I'll take questions. Um, and thank you, Steve, for having me. No problem. Thank you so much. Uh, let's try to tackle this one. We've got a couple moments. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Great question from Ron. So this intermediary between Quarto and Shiny, so you can imagine that Quarto uh, is actually going to provide a dashboard style layout. So you can actually embed Shiny for Python directly into Quarto documents today. And in the future, we'll have more of a dashboard style layout that you can use. Also, Shiny for Python allows for what's called Shiny Live, which is a WASM based implementation of uh, applications, meaning you could run it entirely client side with things like, um, I'm trying to think of what the high script and things like that, where you're running it purely in the browser as opposed to needing a server backend. So yes, we have that on the uh, on the workflow.